Yeah, I want to thank the Chairman and Ranking Member and also our panel and my colleagues who have asked a lot of great questions today. And uh, so good that they took some of the questions I was going to ask, but I do have some. Um, we have talked a lot about uh, terrorism abroad, incredibly appropriate. But as the last few days have shown us, we have terrorism domestically, too. And I guess my question is, can you share with us you know, what sort of focus uh, has been done to, to d address these organizations? You know, um, we are about to bury nine people on, on uh, for, uh, this coming few days. And while it is not clear whether or not this particular incident was a result of an orchestrated e group, there is indication that he relied on services from a group. And of course, we do know that in the case of um, several other uh, attacks uh, uh, that they're, they were affiliated, and these organizations do have money and resources and use them to, uh, to do what they do. Uh, there was uh, three people, not only, you know, we, we think about the horrible events at uh, uh, Mother Emanuel, but there were three people killed at a Jewish community center and assisted living facility in Kansas City not too long ago, and six people were murdered at a Sikh, Sikh temple in Wisconsin. Um, Southern Poverty Law Center publishes a hate map of internal hate groups that I've, I think I've asked to be posted up there. And some of these groups uh, may be inciting violent action, as we saw in South Carolina. So my question to, to the panel is, uh, how are financial institutions responding when some of these neo-Nazi groups, uh, white nationalist groups, Klan groups, anti-government groups, uh, try to access the financial system. And uh, do these financial institutions report such groups to regulatory agencies? Uh, Congressman, in New York City and Manhattan, we have not experienced the problem you are talking about. But I, if I can answer the bigger, broader question um, briefly, the terrorism threat has evolved to uh, what is currently today a, a real risk of homegrown violent extremists operating in our communities. Um, what I think we can do is to make sure that there is the highest level of partnership between Federal investigators and increasingly local investigators. We are blessed to have a New York City Police Department that created competency in counterterrorism under Ray Kelly. That's continued under Commissioner Bratton. But the reality is that the Federal Government cannot do it all. Uh, it needs more hands and eyes and ears on street corners in every city in America. And our office has taken the challenge that we are going to find a way to support uh, this counterterrorism mission by, by essentially uh, developing leads, uh, building cases independent of Federal, uh, the Federal Government having to come up with those leads, and then the Federal Government can, can screen them and we can decide whether the case is a Federal case or a State case. But it, in, my, in the evolving threat, I believe that we need to see increased leadership from the Federal Government to bring into their anti-terrorism efforts the work not just of local police departments but of prosecutors. Uh, prosecutors around the country at the State level would be very happy to help in this regard, but many do not know where to begin. Mr. Ponzi, is this on our radar screen? We are very appropriately focused on some of these foreign terrorists and groups that even come here and commit acts of terror for um, various motivations. But some of these historic groups are still a problem. Are we tracking them financially? Thank you, Congressman. And first, let me just say, I, 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 with the strongest, in the strongest possible terms, support everything Mr. Vance just said. Um, I, I do think, when you look at historically what we have done since 9-11, the focus is clearly on foreign terrorist organizations. Um, our, our immediate uh, focus after 9-11 was on what infiltration those organizations may have in our local communities. And so we took immediate action, um, as you may recall, against a number of Mr. charities. Ponzi, Mr. Ponzi, I definitely think what you are saying is incredibly important. But one part of in the last nine seconds is that we, we do think about the 9-11 and the aftermath, and we are right to do so. But 
are we, are we having a broad approach to all the terrorist threats, not just the Islamic ones? Although I want you to go after them, too. I also want you to go after these other groups. And are we doing that financially? I think we're trying. The, the, the challenge is that when we, when our, our effort is, is aimed at organizational capacity, right? So rogue terrorists, are the, only, the only way to stop that is through what Mr. Vance has said. And it doesn't mean that we shouldn't act. It doesn't mean financial institutions don't have a role. It's just to say that our ability to stop rogue terrorist acts, even inspired acts, as Mr. Vance has said, homegrown violent, violent extremism um, of any stripe, it re really requires partnership at a local level. There, there's no substitute for that. Gentlemen.